Are we good? Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Acting Commander Tony Longhorn, the uh, Acting Commander in charge of uh, State Crime Operations. On Monday 1st February 2021, a bushfire was reported to Department of Fire and Emergency Services in the vicinity of Harper Road in Wooroloo. Due to the adverse weather conditions, the fire grew rapidly out of control, fanned by gusting easterly winds. The bushfire destroyed 10,750 hectares of bushland, 86 homes, numerous sheds, vehicles, machinery and livestock. On 3rd of February 2021, arson squad investigators interviewed a 40-year-old male from Wooroloo in relation to the incident. A version of events was provided to, that, to police at that time. Uh, further investigations between DFES and WA Police Arson Squad investigators were conducted, inclusive of expert reports, weather data, and these were used to identify the most likely ignition source of the fire. As a result of those further investigations, earlier today, the 40-year-old male from Wooroloo was arrested and again interviewed in relation to the fire. He was subsequently charged with breach of duty under section 445A of the Criminal Code and breaching a total fire ban. The man's bar was refused. He is remanded in custody to appear in the Northbridge Magistrates Court tomorrow. Police will allege that the male was in charge or control of an ignition source, in this instance a grinder, and failed to take reasonable precautions to avoid lighting a fire that destroyed or caused damage to property. We are not alleging that the fire was deliberately lit. Any questions? The 15 year penalty for that offence of breaching duty. That's up to the courts. Where, where was he when the fire started? Uh, that's because it's before the courts, I'm not prepared to comment on that. This isn't the first time we've seen um, like a grinder or a, semi, a similar um, piece of machinery. That's spark. correct. No, that's right. And people need to be careful with these uh, catastrophic fire conditions. And this is the outcome. So this must be a pretty big significant breakthrough for police, given how big this fire was. Oh, look, significant impact on the community. Uh, and they're still seeing that. Uh, and it's a, uh, a, an outcome of, of significant investigations and diligent police work with the assistance from Department of Fire Emergency Services uh, to end up at this point. Has this man been cooperative throughout this process? Uh, he has been assisting police with their inquiries. Is, is it part of the allegation that the information he provided at the start was not what happened? Look, he provided the version of events. Uh, the investigations were ongoing and continued, uh, and I can't comment too much in relation to that because it's, as you're aware, before the courts, or will be before the courts tomorrow. It was in February, and of course it's now some months later. Can you yep. just explain to us how in-depth the, the process of getting to this point today? Yeah, look, there's a fair amount of work that goes into identifying the original seat of the fire, where it started, uh, the witnesses, the weather conditions, and a whole lot of uh, expert evidence and, and um, statements that are required to get us to the point where we can uh, prefer a charge of this nature and, I guess, um, be at the point that re reached the threshold to be able to prefer this charge. So it's pretty significant, uh, a lot of inv investigations and assistance from DFES to get to this point. Uh, it's one count of breach of duty, section 445A of the Criminal Code. Uh, in relation to that, that is a person's duty to take care, due care and attention or, or proper precautions when in charge of an ignition source. Uh, and in this instance, you're during a total fire ban. So you know, he's, we'll allege that he failed to take proper precautions or due care and attention in relation to the ignition source he was in possession of. Oh, of course. Every, I mean, with the significant impact on the community, we uh, the, certainly the arson squad and, and Department of Fire and Emergency Services were um, uh, their intent to identify the source. And if someone was responsible, then that's where we've got to now. I don't know. I don't. I, I couldn't comment on that. But certainly, that I'd say there's a lot of people impacted by this, 
Uh, and you know, like I say, we've all got a duty of care. And in this instance, uh, we will allege that this individual didn't take that um, the appropriate precautions to prevent the fire, which impacted on thousands. What is your message to the community? Because this, was, this all happened in a fire land, with the obviously. Yeah. Look, our, our message to the community is adhere to the warnings. This was a total fire ban uh, and uh, there are consequences. Uh, if, you, uh, if you ignore these fire bans and don't take proper precautions, uh, we've seen what the impact is. Uh, and that's my message. Follow the rules, adhere to the warnings. Of course, yeah. It was a pretty significant fire. I think you know the whole of the whole northern side of Perth was impacted, and it, yeah, it's great work by DFS and, and some good luck, I suspect. And I apologise because this isn't <laughs> necessarily a police question, but the clean up and the efforts are still ongoing at the moment, aren't they? It's I imagine so. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty. A lot of houses involved, a lot of people uh, impacted. So yeah, I'd, we've seen how long it takes to clean up after a cyclone, let alone this type of. Uh, impact and devastation. No, he was using a grinder um, on his on the property where the fire occurred. Uh, that's what we'll allege. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail around that. Was he on Harbour Road? I'm not going to go into that detail. Did his uh, property get on fire too? Sorry. Was his property on fire as well? Was his property impacted? I don't know. I don't know that detail. I don't know that he lost any of his property or, or uh, there was a destruction of any. We'll allege that the uh, fire started at the uh, at his address or his location where he was using the grinder. What was his response when he was arrested? I don't know. That's right. I couldn't tell you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Sorry, so is it it's just the one charge of breach of duty or is the breach of fire ban a separate? So there's a charge of breach of duty and a charge of breach of total fire ban. So two charges at this stage. Forty. Yep. Thank you very much.